I can tell you that I have my officers tracking every call they make. Look, it is a, it's a mess. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not, but it was created over a lot of years, and you don't solve it in three months. But I think there are ways that we can solve it. For instance, I'm having my officers give me a report every month that tracks the number of calls that come in. So you talk about policing. Well, first of all, I would say as a county, when you think about cost of services, you want your calls to be in the limos because if they're 30 miles away, your cost of service just tripled. So as a cost of service, everybody pays county taxes. Your cost of servicing those calls are a lot lower in Glenrose, Texas. So, and I can give you studies if you want to look at them. Just to back to that. Well, Troy, but here's the problem, and I get what you're saying. In law enforcement, is what I've done forever. The city of Glenrose is, uh, for instance, Psycho has five officers, and that's still not enough to cover the city 24 hours a day. Yep. They have an interlope with the county to cover those extra times. The sheriff's department has done a study on how much we spent two years ago, and you have two officers and they're good officers, but their times have to overlap some so that sure. they can coordinate. But there is a lot of county money being spent on officers that is way offset up with the county taxes the citizens pay inside the city. And you guys are not helping offset that at all by providing either more law enforcement officers to actually provide the services that a city this side needs for law enforcement, or helping reimburse the county for the cost of the county officers, the sheriff's deputies having to come into the county and make all the calls. So here's what I would tell you, you know, there is a conversation that needs to be had about, you know, if somebody locks their keys in their car, why do we need a deputy to show up? They do. Um, unless our guys call your guys for backup, do we necessarily need them there? Maybe not. So, we, if you want to, you know, and I know Commissioner Harris is, has, we've developed some things that we can start tracking them. But if that's the conversation, we need to have an honest conversation about overlap. Do we have to do it? I mean, we're in a good situation because we live in a very low crime area, and we're extremely fortunate for that, right? That's a good thing. But I don't necessarily always need that. If we need them, we need them. I mean, you guys have resources that we don't have, obviously. So investigative, things like that. If it's a fatality, obviously, as well as DPS, we're going to need those. But we can work towards more weaning us away, if you will, which it sounds like that's what you were asking for. Well, we've asked but we need a good conversation on the other side. That's Is true. it necessary to have your guys there all the time just because they may be bored or overstaffed? True, but sometimes it's necessary for our guys to be there because a lot of the times you guys have coverage that. too. And for sure. And also, we've attempted to have conversations before you got here and they were literally just ignored. Well, my office is right there. It's open, and, and honestly, I would like a you know a, a work session, if you will, to start going through the numbers. And a lot of people need to be there, and a lot of people need to be open to that conversation. But I'm open to it, so I think we can get towards that. And we've already started tracking. Him and I have have started tracking numbers, and I I can assure you. If you want to go to the council meeting tomorrow night, you know, our chief will be telling our council how many calls we're doing, how many times we handled it versus having somebody else do it. But we are tracking that now and we will work towards the time where we're doing more in the city without you guys unless we need them, right? Which most dual agencies would do, right? But I would tell you that's a goal that we work towards. It's not going to happen tomorrow. But I think it can happen. Sure, and I've got you. And I just, you know, it's frustrating. We've tried in April and got nothing back. So we're sitting here almost a year now. And I'm glad you're here now as a new person. Maybe we can get some discussion going. But literally, it was a broke wall of just ignoring and expecting us to get to pay for everything. 
or how we help her do that. Yeah. Yes, Kelly. I thought the mayor had his hand up. That was Kelly. Go ahead, Kelly. As a former city council member, uh, the chief of police has always given us a monthly report on the calls, what calls they go out on, what calls they take care of. So that is nothing new. The sheriff's department has also provided monthly reports of the calls they take and stuff. So the information that you are bringing to this commission is, is nothing new. So why? And these numbers have all been gone over before with multiple so, different cities. So then, Excuse me, let me finish, please. Sure. All these numbers have been gone over when, on the council when I was on council, this commission, the previous commission, and stuff. This is a never ending battle because people think that they deserve more than what they get. I mean, it's never been an even trade. So I resent the fact that y'all think that just having Buck give you a report every month, that that's going to prove that the, the sheriff's department's not doing, you know, uh, the type of duty that they have been doing to cover the citizens inside the city. And I live inside the city limits. So I just want everybody to know that this is nothing new. Buck has always given a monthly report on what calls he takes, of where they are, what type they are, what type of investigations he's doing, and what how he spends his time. So that is nothing new. Sheriff's Department does the same thing. Okay. Well, again, I haven't been here forever, so I can't tell you what was done in the past, I can tell you today, the reason we track them is not to give you a bunch of fluff, but to have my officers take on more responsibility inside the city. So, and that's exactly what we're doing. And if you want to talk to Doug, he's, he's going to tell you that that's what we've been talking about. Whether that happened in the past, I don't know. But look, I mean, at some point, this has got to stop. I mean, this situation was created over years, right? And maybe it was Mother Nuclear Power Plant that got us in this situation. But if you want it to change, number one, you got to be intentional about wanting it to change and doing something about it. So let's do something about it, but you can't think it's going to change overnight because it took you years to get to this situation. Now, I can't say that I'm ready to hire two more officers, but I can assure you we've had talks about hiring a third one. So, and I have them giving me their schedules and I'm looking at, at times when we need them. You know, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not a police chief or a data analyst, but I want to see when we need them. Maybe I need to move their hours some, you know, and and you know I want to know when the calls are. And look, we got to go through the data and, and separate like watch type things where somebody's out of town or drive by my house and make sure it's okay. From hey, I you know we've got a situation here and it's a you know, domestic disturbance and I need backup. That's what we need to do. You know what I mean? But I can tell you, we're starting that. Yeah, that's a good step. That's you good. know? Yeah. So.